Scientists at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach are using the latest daily data to help the public understand the science of El Nino. Folks like Aquarium of the Pacific President and CEO Jerry Schubel. Schubel, who is an oceanographer, is taking me to the Ocean Science Center at the Aquarium to explain El Nino and to also show me that really cool thing you see over there that looks like a giant animated globe. It's actually a state-of-the-art computer visualization system called Science on a Sphere. This six-foot diameter sphere is a room-sized global display system that uses computers and video projectors to present planetary data as it actually happens. So for example, if the temperature of the ocean thousands of miles away increases ever so slightly, the technology is here in the sphere almost immediately and it animates images of things like storms, climate changes, and water temperatures. It's a great way to visualize El Nino and you can see here that all of that red, that's warm water and in an El Nino, it piles up along the eastern margin of the Pacific Ocean, particularly along the equatorial regions. What is El Nino exactly? The name means the Christ child. That name was given to it by Peruvian fishermen because it's a phenomenon that occurred around Christmas time every few years. The driving force, though, is what happens with the trade winds. Normally, the trade winds are quite strong and they blow from east to west. And as they blow from east to west, they pile warm water up in the western Pacific. Every two to seven years, the trade winds relax, they slow down, sometimes they even reverse. And all of that warm water that was piled up in the western Pacific now starts to slide downhill, slosh back toward the east coast of South America. That's what an El Nino is. And we're seeing that now, so we can expect to have a strong El Nino comparable probably to 1997, 98, or 82, 83. How is El Nino going to affect us here in Southern California? You can have torrential downpours, it can lead to mud, mud slumps, it can lead to flooding. Back in the late 90s, El Nino was on every news channel 24-7. Were folks overreacting to it? Was the news media going crazy over it? Or is this something we should really be concerned about, particularly this time around? We should be concerned about it, but the, if the concern leads to getting prepared, that's better than just panicking. We're in one of the worst droughts we have ever seen in California. Why though, with all this anticipated rainfall this winter and the following months, won't we be able to get out of the drought? We will get a lot of precipitation, almost certainly. We don't have the capacity to capture and store or put that, that rainwater into the groundwater. How do you see El Nino affecting the ocean landscape? There will be big effects on, on marine life, but there will also be big effects on st coastal storms. Sea level is rising and you superimpose those storms on top of a higher stand of sea level and you can expect to have greater damage. Dave Bader is a marine biologist and the director of education at the Aquarium of the Pacific. Bader says the warmer waters from El Nino off the coast of California can either help or harm certain marine life. For example, fish that live in the warmer waters off of Mexico are now migrating here off the Southern California coast during an El Nino, like yellowtail, tuna, and even mahi-mahi. However, Bader explains some of our local sea life doesn't do so well during an El Nino. You see uh, conditions change and for the organisms that live in the ocean, if you're an animal that is, or an organism that's, you know, sort of staying put, if you can't move with those oceanographic conditions, uh, then you might have some serious challenges. So algaes in particular, and like the giant kelp behind me, when the conditions change, they can really, you know, die. Uh, phytoplankton is another thing that changes. As we don't have this base of the food chain stuff, you get shifting of, of different kinds of organisms and that can lead to collapsing of food chains off the coast of Peru and off the coast of Southern California. We can see that during an El Nino. Despite the fact that El Nino presents some problems for human life and marine life, Bader says Mother Nature is the greatest teaching tool to bring us the newest data for scientists. The extreme weather events that we're having right now are gonna become more frequent. The changing ocean conditions that we're seeing right now are likely to occur in the future. El Nino is giving us a chance to see what the future might be like and how prepared we are for that future. Because in the final analysis, I guess it's